Most people in critical care know obstructive lung disease causes a sloping, shark fin shaped capnography curve. But do you understand why this occurs? My name is Ken Hoffman. I'm an intensivist at the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne. Today we're going to explore the obstructive capnography waveform. This video is aimed at those sitting the Australian and New Zealand College of Intensive Care Medicine first part examination to guide the expected level of knowledge. To start with, we're going to quickly recap the phases of the normal capnography curve. At the start of expiration, the lungs are filled with carbon dioxide. However, the first expired gas comes from the airways. This is the anatomical dead space, which is not participated in gas exchange. So the CO2 concentration should be close to zero. This is phase one. The upstroke of the curve is phase two. This is the transition between the anatomical dead space and the alveolar gas reaching the analyzer. Phase three consists of expired alveolar gas and should be almost level, but always has a slight positive gradient, which we'll discuss later. The end point of phase three is termed the end tidal CO2 or ETCO2. The last phase is either termed phase zero or phase four, depending on which textbook you're reading. This is the rapid return to the zero baseline as the next inspiratory breath occurs. The transition point between phase two and phase three is called the alpha angle. And the transition between phase three and phase zero is termed the beta angle. In obstructive lung disease, there are alterations in the slope of phase two and phase three, with an increase in the alpha angle. Let's take a closer look at why this occurs. There are two physiological concepts we need to discuss. Time constants and ventilation perfusion or VQ matching. The definition of a time constant is the time taken for a negative exponential function to reach zero if the initial rate were to continue. It can also be described as the time taken for an exponentially declining function to reduce to 37% of its initial value. From a respiratory physiology point of view, time constants describe the time it takes for gas to move in and out of alveoli. The two variables that determine this are the compliance and the resistance. If all alveoli had the same time constants, they would fill and empty at exactly the same rate. In healthy people, time constants are remarkably similar. However, in obstructive lung disease, particularly COPD, there is heterogeneity of compliance and resistance in alveolar units leading to wide variation in time constants. So different parts of the lung are filling and emptying at very different rates. In obstructive lung disease, the increased airway resistance delays the transition from dead space to alveolar gas, which reduces the slope of phase two on the capnography curve. The second concept to discuss is ventilation perfusion or VQ matching. If all alveoli contain the same concentration of carbon dioxide, phase three would be horizontal, regardless of variations in alveolar time constants. However, even in normal lungs, there is variation in the ratio between ventilation and perfusion throughout the lungs. Areas with high ventilation and low perfusion or high VQ ratio alveoli, contain a relatively low concentration of CO2 and usually have shorter time constants. Areas with high perfusion and low ventilation, which results in a low VQ ratio, contain a relatively high concentration of CO2. These alveoli also tend to have slower time constants which is why phase three slopes slightly upwards, even in healthy lungs. This effect gets exaggerated with increasing resistance to gas flow. 
When we combine these two physiological principles of variable alveolar time constants, particularly due to increased airway resistance, and heterogeneous VQ ratios, which is exacerbated by positive pressure ventilation, we can see why there is a progressive rise in CO2 during phase 3 in obstructive lung disease. As a result of the reduced gradient of phase 2 and the increased gradient of phase 3, the alpha angle increases and with severe obstruction it can be difficult to identify where the alpha angle actually is. Of interest, because of the reasons we've discussed, the alpha angle can be considered an overall marker of VQ matching. As a minor point, as CO2 is continuously moving from pulmonary blood into alveoli, even in lungs with perfect VQ matching, there would be a slight increase in alveolar CO2 during expiration. However, this is a very small effect. The final point of interest on the obstructed capnography waveform is the end tidal CO2. This is often significantly elevated and the trend can be useful for monitoring response to ventilation. However, it is usually significantly lower than the arterial PaCO2. This is termed the PaCO2 to ETCO2 gap, which is caused by alveolar dead space, which we'll discuss in a future video. To recap, the sloping shark fin shape of the obstructed capnography curve is caused by a combination of two effects. One, variable alveolar time constants, and two, heterogeneous VQ matching throughout the lung. If this video was useful, please hit the like button. If you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel.